In this lesson, you learn about floors and create additional floor types. Floors are system families and as such are created directly within the project. Floors are hosted onto levels and can be offset from a level if required. Floors can be created from composite layers and can have slopes and have complex shapes using the shape editor. Go ahead and open up project A. This lesson continues from module 4.5. We're going to begin by creating a floor type for our ground floor slab. Our ground floor slab will use the same grade of concrete as the rest of the project, which is C40, and it's going to be 300 millimeters thick. To begin, we'll open up the 00 ground floor plane. We can then go to the structure ribbon and select floor. In the properties palette in the type selector, you'll note here that we have a number of floors already configured. You'll see here that we have compound materials and here we have a concrete slab with a steel deck underneath. We're going to begin here by using generic 300 millimeter. We'll then click edit type and in the type properties dialog box, we'll duplicate. So here we'll type in RC slab 300 and we can select OK. We now need to edit the structure of our slab. So here you can see that we have the edit button adjacent to structure. So we'll select this and now we're in the edit assembly dialog box. Very similar to a wall, it's a good idea to see a preview of this. So we can select the preview. And currently we're looking at a cross section through our floor slab. In the layers area, you'll notice we have the core boundary here and then we have our function of floor slab. For our RC slab, it's just going to need one layer. So this is of course going to be a structure. We can then select our material. So this will be C40. Once again, in the materials browser, I can just do a search for C40. We can then select concrete cast in place C40 and then click OK. Notice that the edit assembly dialog box now shows that new material. The default thickness is 300 millimeters, which is actually what we require. And of course here, this is going to be a structural material. Now a bit later on, we'll use the shape editing tools on a floor slab. So I'm going to check variable. And what this will do is it will keep the soffit of the slab flat, but it will allow the thickness to vary on the top surface there. So for example, if we put a fall angle towards a drainage area on the ground floor slab, the thickness could then vary from the thickest part down to where the drain's going to be. So now that our assembly is complete, we can click OK and OK again to the type properties dialog. And here we're going to sketch our boundary of our floor slab. You'll notice on the context ribbon that boundary line is already activated and I'll go ahead and select line. So here I'm just going to simply trace around the walls. And of course we can then use the column corner over here. Yep, we'll come to this area over here. Again, we'll probably need to tidy up this wall. Now here, I haven't got any clear space to actually stop. So I'll just leave it there and we'll come along over here somewhere. You'll notice that that's completely inaccurate, but that doesn't matter for the minute. And we'll then come across to here. Now at this point, I need to tidy this up. So notice on the modify ribbon, we have the align command. So I'm going to select this. I'll select the face of my concrete wall. And then I can pick my boundary line. And of course, now you'll notice that that's now cleaned up that boundary. We'll now need to cantilever our boundary sketch 175 millimeters past these grid lines. To do this, I'm going to use the pick lines tool. And here I can set an offset on the options bar of 175. And of course, here we can then go ahead and offset our boundaries. To tidy up the junction here, again on the modify ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and use trim extend to corner. And we'll trim this one over here. And we'll trim this one here. And you can now see that we have a nice clean and tidy boundary. We'll put our structural openings in a bit later. Now, just one thing to remember before we finalize the floor slab, you'll see here that we have this special symbol. This symbol is designating the span direction of the floor slab and currently it's spanning in this direction here, which is a little bit unusual. 
So here I'm going to select span direction. And here with pick lines, I can simply pick another line that represents the span direction. Now, in actual fact, this floor slab is going to be a two way spanning slab. So I'm just going to pick here. Note in the properties palette, we have the level that this slab is going to reside at. So we mentioned here that this is going to be the zero zero ground floor plan. We could change that if we wanted to. But of course, that's where I want this to be. I could also give it a height offset from level. So this could be a positive or a negative value. And of course, you'll see here we have things like area, perimeter and volume. All of this will be computed when we come up here and we select finish edit mode. So, of course, now we can see that the slab has now been created and in the properties padded, we'll now see the perimeter, area, volume, elevation at top and elevation at bottom. OK, so if we now go back to our 3D view, we'll now see our floor slab. As I've said, later on, we'll need to actually put some structural openings in. And in the next module, we'll create another slab on the top level here, and then we'll create a composite deck to sit on top of our steelwork. Okay, so that concludes this video.